All right. All right. So we're talking about PPC hacks to make all this content that you're building uh, and writing to go viral. Uh, and basically, um, you know, we're, we're basically into a Mars mission here. Our, our, your target customer stranded on Mars. Uh, and of course, uh, this is America. We are going to not let him die and not use uh, the products and services that you're, you're um you're, you're trying to sell, uh, we are going to bring him home and, and mount a very ambitious uh, rescue mission. Unfortunately, Mars, it's its pretty far away. Uh, we're talking, uh, you know, 225 million kilometers, uh, which is uh, pretty far. Uh, in fact, uh, all these Mars missions, they usually don't work. Uh, you know, like we always try to get our stuff viral and, and it never works. It, it always fails. Why? Uh, well, for starters, uh, organic social, uh, you know, reach is is terrible. Uh, e even if you're like really, really great at social media, organic, uh, you know, it's the, the numbers are just terrible, even for companies like Buffer. Uh, you know, another problem is uh, that 99.9% .9 of, of the of the content that you create, um, you know, goes nowhere. So forget about getting to Mars. Uh, I mean, this 99.9% .9 of the stuff is getting fewer than uh, than uh, 1,000 shares, and 50% and of it is getting zero social shares. So this is like pr practically blowing up on the launch, launching pad as opposed to clearing uh, orbit. Uh, and, and even if by some miracle you're able to get some some traffic uh, to your to your uh, content uh, via I don't know Facebook or or organic or whatever, um, you know the you know if you, the the problem here is that the conversion rate uh, from from this content marketing stuff it's usually less than one percent, uh, and that's terrible because I think you know one of the reasons why we're doing all this blogging is so that we can sell stuff. Uh, and so, you know, in some ways, content marketing, you know, uh, 2017, it does feel a bit like a suicide mission. Um, uh, and, but uh, don't worry, oh, we'll get through this. We've got, you know, uh, 20 minutes left here. Uh, I know you have a lot of questions about me here, here and, and, and the mission. Um, wanted to just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Larry. I'm with the National Space Unicorn Agency. You see, and I have over 100 successful flights to Mars and back. Uh, I'll be your flight director for the next 20 minutes. I'm originally from Canada. I saw there were some people from Regina there. Uh, so I'm originally from a city called Winnipeg, uh, which is very famous for being colder than Mars for most of the year. Uh, and actually, uh, you know, Mars is, uh, is is considered warm by my standards. It's so warm that I don't even need a spacesuit, uh, just, just an oxygen mask. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, guys. Uh, you know, here's some uh, photos I moved to Boston uh, a, a couple of years ago, I became a US citizen uh, because I thought the, the weather was so much greater here. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Um, uh, that's not really Boston photos, that was Mars. Uh, and, and, and basically I live in Harvard Square. Uh, it's like a neighborhood in Cambridge. It's very famous, it's where uh, Microsoft was founded, it's where Facebook was founded, it's also where WordStream was founded. Uh, that's my own company. Uh, I started in 2008 as kind of like a sole proprietor, you know, one-man show, internet marketer working out of a Panera Bread uh, because of the free uh, Diet Coke refills and, and uh, and, and uh, free free Wi-Fi. Uh, but basically, uh, the company's grown a lot in the last eight years. Um, you know, we I now employ over 200 people with over 10,000 customers, uh, managing nearly a billion dollars of ad spend uh, for companies worldwide. Um, my background's in electrical engineering, and so all this rocket science, don't worry, I've got you covered. Uh, and I also have a two-year-old kid uh, named Julian. You can follow him on Twitter uh, with the hashtag PPC kid. Here we are running the marathon together this April. He was trying to help me, but actually it wasn't that helpful. Um, okay, enough about me. We're back to our mission. And the mission is uh, going to Mars with our our content, but in, for, in order to, uh, you know, figure this out, we, we got to start with the basics and figure out how this content marketing really work, works. Uh, and basically, I can tell you how it doesn't work. Uh, you know, a lot of people think it's like so easy. All you have to do is create a blog and then share it on your social network, and then all, you know, magically someone will buy all all your stuff. And this actually never happens. You know, most of the time, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the content goes nowhere. Uh, and even if they do read your your content. Uh, that the purchase uh, you know takes time is and is indirect, uh, and you know that's kind of a bummer because we would like to really we would like to believe the the myth uh, that's so much more convenient. Uh, but I think what what we really need is a way to make these sales happen quicker and to make it so that you know it's not such a suicide mission. And to do this, we're going to need a new type of technology. I'm calling it a new unicorn rocket technology. And uh, you know I know what you're thinking. You're like unicorn rockets. That sounds really expensive. And I'm like no no no. Don't worry. It's not that expensive. In fact. The way uh, these unicorn rockets are designed, they're very, very cheap. Uh, you can get your own for $50 or less. Um, it's quite a deal. Uh, 
Uh, and so the way that I use social media advertising for content marketing is uh, is one of two ways. I don't spend tens of thousands of dollars on it. I just use it as a catalyst. You know, these micro budgets of fifty dollars uh, as a catalyst to get the ball rolling. So sometimes content marketing, you just need, need to give these things a little bit of a push uh, to 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 get uh, people to start to engage with that content. The other thing that I do is I use uh, these small micro budgets, uh, PPC budgets, to make a very very successful content marketing project uh, even more successful by throwing gas on the fire to make those explosions even bigger. Uh, and so basically, here's kind of, there's two things that social media ads do fantastically well. The first is that it's the most scalable, cheapest way to get, you know, your content in front of the target market uh, that you're that you're going after. Uh, so, so amplification of your content to very specific uh, people with certain attributes like demographics, behaviors, and interests. Uh, the second thing that uh, social media ads does fantastically well is it allows you to convert those people uh, into actual sales and leads for your business. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, the whole point of this blogging and content marketing isn't just, you know, to get hits. Uh, we're, we're actually trying to get leads and sales for, for the business. All right, so uh, let's get to it. We're talking about my top eight hacks to make your content go viral, and I do this all the time, guys. I'm going to give away all my secrets. Uh, my number eight pr promotion hack has to do with uh, leveraging this notion of quality score in, fit in, in Twitter and Facebook ads. Uh, it, or it's same idea that Facebook actually calls it relevancy score. Uh, basically, it has to do with like, you know, how how engaging is the content that you're promoting? Are people liking it, sharing it, commenting on it, clicking on it like crazy? If so, you'll have a high engagement rate uh, and, and and you'll be rewarded with, with a very high relevancy score, which is a score from one to 10. Basically, the higher the, the relevancy score, the more times your ads will show uh, at, at a much lower, lower cost. Uh, same idea in Twitter, they just call it a quality adjusted bid, but basically the higher the relevancy, recency, and, and resonance of the tweet that you're promoting, uh, the more like the more likely it is to be shown, uh, and, and the far lower the cost. Uh, so a lot of times people start with with a social ad promotion of content, and they're like, "Oh my god, I tried boosting a post, and it cost three dollars a click, and that was horrible." And I'm like, "Yeah, that was horrible," because what they don't realize is instead of uh, instead of promoting some piece of garbage content with a one percent engagement rate for three dollars a click, which is crazy, um, if if instead you could uh, promote something else with like a you know, seven percent, twenty percent, thirty, or sixty-eight percent engagement rate, uh, your cost would go down. You know, to eight cents, three cents, even less than one penny per click. Uh, and so, uh, basically, the goal here in social media uh, in, uh, advertising uh, for for content promotion is to get a very, very high quality uh, score, or I, I get very high post engagement in terms of the things that you're promoting. If you if you do, your life will be great. Your ads will show. It'll be very cheap. Uh, if if you uh, if you do not follow this advice, uh, then your life will be terrible. Your ads will will rarely show. Uh, and and if they do show, they'll ch cost you you know five dollars a click. Uh, and so th th basically, the strategy becomes you know what we need to do is promote only the best stuff. Yeah, I call these your unicorns, the top one or two or three percent of your content, um, it, rather than promoting garbage. Uh, and so this is one example of, of, a, of a, a unicorn tweet uh, that I had uh, a year ago. It was just like you know goodbye Google Plus. I put a funny Google gravestone and a link. You know what? I, I, everyone has these things where you, you you tweet something or you put something on your Facebook wall, and all of a sudden you get like a hundred likes, and you're like, holy cow, what's going on here? Uh, basically, that's a unicorn. That means that like everyone who, who sees it uh, really, really likes it. This had a 30% engagement rate. That's very, very high. And so what I did was I put uh, $250 to boost this post because I knew it was so great and everyone who sees this or 30% of the people who sees this would engage with it. And so for doing that $250 spend, it got 1,500 retweets and 100,000 visitors to the, to the content uh, for a grand total of $250. That's a very, very low cost considering you know your time is not free. It costs more than $250 to produce this content. So basically the worst thing you can ever do is try to send these donkeys into space because they never make it. Uh, you know, marketers, the, the, the worst thing you can do is say like I've got a thousand dollar budget for for content promotion, and I, I'm going to do ten blog posts. I'm going to evenly divide the thousand uh, dollars, you know, one hundred dollars per post. No, 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 that's a terrible strategy because nine out of ten of those posts are going to be donkeys, and they're not going to make it. What you actually need to do is take the whole thousand dollars and and wait for it, wait for the unicorn, and when the unicorn appears, go all in on that one unicorn. The second stupidest thing you, you can do, biggest mistake, is to say like, oh my God, it's been so long since we've had a unicorn. Uh, let's just promote some 
some piece of junk content from last month, uh, you know, maybe it'll do better this month. Well, actually, it won't do any better this month because if it didn't do well last month, it's not going to do any better this month. That's crazy. Uh, so basically, uh, what we need to do is is figure out a way to get high quality score unicorns 100% of the time. Uh, and so to do this, uh, like if you could do this, it would be so great. You'd be like living in sunny unicorn land. Uh, and believe me, it is great there. It's like, you know, always sunny and never rains and always a nice 77 degrees. Uh, so basically, uh, in order to do this, I've created some new technology here. It's a unicorn detector. It looks very complicated, but it's actually very simple to, to use. Um, basically, what we need to know is, is, is the content that we or have, uh, is it a quality unicorn or is it like, uh, is it a donkey? Uh, donkeys are like the, the unremarkable stuff, like the 99% of content that goes nowhere. Uh, now, the problem is that marketers they're they're very biased okay they, we we think our shit doesn't stink it's like everything we produce is a unicorn no 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 no. only one percent of it is a unicorn uh, it's you're not the judge of whether or not your your stuff is a unicorn or not because you're biased uh, we're going to let the readers decide uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to to or, audition audition the content um you know on, on different channels or getting channels like email or twitter and see how they do like if you're if this email if you blasted out an email and it got like a 30 percent open rate well that that's a unicorn because a typical, uh, you know, open rate might be only 12%. You see what I'm saying? Or, or if you get a 20% engagement rate on Twitter, that's great because the average is closer to one or two percent. So we're going to addition lots of content and 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 then only promote the victors, the the, the ones that, that make it, to, uh, you know, with the very very unusually high engagement rates. Uh, that way, we can kind of determine whether or not it's uh, this piece of content is a unicorn or if it was something we thought was a unicorn but really was like a triceratops or 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 a uh, rhinoceros or, or some other creature that we, we mistook for for a unicorn. Uh, so basically the, the, the key summary here is we've got to test more stuff organically and we're only going to send the the unicorns into space and, and by this I mean the top one to three percent of your most engaging content. Uh, you know so how do we figure out how it's doing? You just download the engagement rate data from from your um, uh, from your Twitter analytics or your Facebook insights console and sort by engagement rates or click-through rates or, or conversion rates or whatever you care about. Just find the ones that are doing the best. And, and when I mean best, I mean not just a little bit better, but like two or three times better than the average, the outliers. And those are the things that we are going to pay to promote. Guys, there's a huge difference between paid and organic uh, uh, social media marketing. So in paid social media ads, the biggest difference between paid and, and organic uh, is is this one important point, uh, and that is in paid social media ads, you actually have to pay for all this engagement, uh, and so you need to be very, very picky. So in organic social media, it's like I'm just going to blast this thing out to as many people as I can. You know what I mean? Like it's there's no penalty. Like I don't care. It's it's like free. Uh, but 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 in paid social media, it's it's slightly different game. What we're trying to do is we're going to try to promote this content not to everybody, uh, but to rather very small, narrow net of specific people and to try to get, you know, 30, 40, 50% engagement rates within that narrow net that we are casting. And so this brings me to my number seven uh, social uh, ads, uh, you know, content, content marketing hack, uh, which has to do with using premium rocket, uh, premium unicorn kisses rocket fuel. Say that three times quickly. Uh, so basically, we're not going to use regular unleaded to fuel our unicorn rocket. We're gonna, going to use premium fuel from unicorn, uh, unicorn farts. And basically, uh, it's it gets remarkably great mi mileage, and I just want to show you this funny example. Don't crucify me. I, this is an old example. I didn't think Donald Trump was going to get this far, and you know, like nobody knew this. But but, but basically, uh, over a year ago, I, I wrote this article. You know, make your Twitter marketing greater. Grand ten goofy things that that. It's Donald Trump does on on Twitter. That that's kind of goofy. Uh, I I wrote this article, and and I um. I promoted it as an ad on on Twitter, and it did really, really well. It did a 27% engagement rate, you know, uh, 348 retweets, you know, 18 followers, 2,000 clicks for $49. So this is a real thing here. Like, this is $49. Like, when I say we're, I'm only spending $50, that's not a gimmick. I only spend $50 because if it doesn't do well in the first $50, it's not going to change if you add another $100 to it. You see, it's, it's kind of like, like, it's 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 gonna be uh, it's gonna be what it is. You know what I mean? Uh, so basically, uh, why? How did I get this this engagement rate so high? Well, it has to do with the targeting. So like, I I targeted this piece of content not to 
everyone. Everyone is not a target market. I targeted to people who uh, were like fans of Donald Trump, who had social media marketing job titles, you know, who were using certain like anti Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, hashtags and all this stuff. And also not only could I draw a nice target around who I wanted to target, I could exclude people who I didn't think would be interested in the, in this content. And so basically this example is merely, it's, it's not meant to be political. It's just merely to point out that the best campaigns have to have, uh, you know, a very precise audience definition of who you're targeting and who you're not targeting uh, so that you can uh, make sure that this thing resonates like at 20 or 30 or 40 percent and not at one or two or three percent. Uh, so basically audi adding this audience targeting or premium unicorn kisses rocket fuel as I like to call it uh, adding this targeting turns these you know mediocre ads into near unicorns uh, my number six hack today has to do with uh, getting free clicks from paid social promotion and how the heck does that work because like people are like what how do you get free clicks from paid social PPC ads uh, and basically uh, what you need to know is that if I um, uh, if, if I get one, if I, if I promote a piece of content on, say, Facebook or Twitter, and if you retweet that, okay, well, then I have to pay for that. But if one of your friends then notices that you retweeted my ad, uh, then that they click on that piece of content, that's free, that's second order engagement. And so if the whole strategy here is to promote, you know, very, very, uh, like highly likely to be retweeted or liked content, uh, you could get into a situation where it's kind of like for every one uh, retweet that you're paying for, you're getting two or three free. And this is just an example of that. See that yellow stuff, that's where I'm paying for it. But that also resuscitated the organic impressions uh, substantially. My number five social ads hack has to do with using ion boosters to clear our Earth's gravity field. Uh, and so this has to do with uh, using the uh, custom audiences. So uh, this isn't new. It's about two or three years old, but I'm surprised at how low adoption uh, this is, given how powerful it is. It just allows you to upload phone numbers and emails to target, uh, you know, specific people with specific ads. Uh, it's a little bit like email marketing, but you don't have to worry about like unsubscribes. Uh, you don't have to worry about like limits. Like I can. Um, you know, if, if I want to do a blast uh, to my WordStream customers, like the next opening is like in June. Uh, and so, you know, because we only do one a week or something like this. So like, you know, you don't have to worry about these inventory constraints. Uh, you can even add people who aren't on your list onto the list. Uh, and so I think it's really interesting because it allows you to, to do some really clever things. I'm going to give you a couple examples. Here's one example. Uh, this is a uh, blog post that I wrote a little while ago. It's like, does Twitter ads work? Uh, comparing the, the performance of the world's large, largest social ad networks like F Facebook versus Twitter. Um, it wasn't that remarkable. It was just a simple article showing like the cost per click, you know, the click through rates, conversion rates of Facebook for Twitter versus Twitter on average. I put it on a little graphical format and, and blogged about it. I put it on my social media. The one thing that I did here that was really interesting was that I promoted it uh, as, a, as an ad. And now I didn't promote it to everyone, all, all my Twitter followers, because I have half a million Twitter followers. Like, like that's going to cost a lot of money, you know? So I was being, instead of going to everyone, I had an intern create a list of influential people of, of the, you know, 1,666 most influential people who cover the ad tech space, uh, you know, like Facebook, like Google, like, like uh, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, all this stuff. Who are the journalists for the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times? Et cetera, et cetera, who cover that information and, and come up with a list of their Twitter names. Uh, and I uploaded those. Uh, and so I have a custom list of 1,666 people. Uh, and then I promoted it not to everyone, but just to that specific list. Now, within an hour of, of running that ad, the editor in chief of Business Insider, uh, he, he writes me an email, says, hey, I saw your thing. Can we can we republish your story uh, on our, our blog as a kind of a guest post? And I'm like, holy cow, yeah, absolutely. Because Business Insider, that's like, you know, 100 times bigger than my WordStream blog. Uh, so like, I'm really excited. And I'll see all that blue stuff on the page. Those are links. So those are valuable links back to my web website, um, you know, that, that you know, that allow me to get, you know, the, the SEO link juice. And I'm like so excited. I'm doing my link building dance. Uh, but the thing about these unicorns is remember how I was saying it's like $50 and all this stuff, but that's just the, 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 that's doesn't mean you you have to spend fifty dollars. If you have something that's like a unicorn, this is rare, remarkable creature that's so beautiful and so wonderful, like you should go all in. Like you can spend more than fifty dollars. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. I went all in. I put another fifty dollars towards promoting this post on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you know, one hour later. 
uh, you know, the, the, the guy from Fox News emails me. He's like, hey, we saw your story on Business Insider. Uh, do you want to join us on, on, on the Fox Business Network uh, for, for, for a live interview? So the next day, I'm like on Fox television, like cable news with over a million people tuning into this thing worldwide. It's like a four and a half minute segment. Uh, super, super valuable exposure for my company. And, and, and for me personally, it was a great experience. Uh, it, was, it was incredible, actually. Uh, I could, you know, think about how much a commercial costs for 30 seconds to buy that kind of airtime. Uh, but this was just, just based on, you know, paying $50 to, to get a Twitter ad in front of the, the producer of this show. Uh, and so it, it hard to believe that it could get any possibly better. Uh, but actually, um, the the all the uh, the VPs at Facebook they 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 saw that piece uh, you know because there's so many people who watch that business show they they watched that piece and I basically beat up on Twitter ads I said Facebook is so much better than Twitter uh, <laughs> and of course they really liked that that I said that and so they emailed me an a, a, an intro letter and, and offered to fly me out to Menlo Park and meet some of the executives I got to meet uh, Cheryl Sandberg uh, uh, and I, uh, I I didn't talk to Mark Zuckerberg but I saw him uh, but but actually um, the the thing is um, that was really Really so interesting about this visit was they found out that my wife was pregnant. This was like two years ago, uh, and so they uh, they gave me this baby hoodie that was worth twenty five dollars, uh, which is basically half of the media spend. Guys, that's like we'll talk about ROI here. So basically, we're t we're saying you know fifty dollars, ten minutes, uh, you know two hundred fifty more high value press pickups. I was actually on the radio, different radio channels like the BBC, NPR, uh, etc. Massive brand exposure, over a hundred thousand visitors to the site. You know, so huge ROI. For, 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 for very little. And if you're like uh, an e-commerce e uh, application, um, you can use this technique for selling stuff as well as PR stunts. Uh, you just segment your, your email lists, your, like your email campaigns, figure out which, which are doing the best and, and upload those email addresses uh, and, and um, you know target them with very specific creative. Uh, and if you want to go after people who are not um, just um, in your database, but also go after other people who uh, who haven't heard of you yet. You, there's this thing called similar audiences that goes after people who are 99% similar uh, and and um, you know allows you to, to grow your list by 10 times. Great, we're in orbit. Uh, very, very few uh, companies make it this far, less than 1%. Um, we only have like five minutes here, so I'm going to have to go quick. Uh, we need to go to Mars. We're going to need an Earth gravity assist. Uh, so we're going to slingshot around these large uh, gravitational forces in order to Get some momentum going and, and get us, uh, pretty, you, know, you know, going towards Mars. Uh, the big gravitational forces on the internet in terms of content promotions are those those uh, aggregator sites like Hacker News, Dig, Reddit, LinkedIn Pulse, etc. Uh, one of them is Medium. Uh, this is one that I really like. It's it's. Uh, you can post your, your, your blog there. And, and once I, I posted a blog post uh, that got over a million views uh, and, and 6,000 uh, likes. And, and how the heck did that happen? Uh, it was so popular that like Ariana Huffington, you know, shared the story on her Twitter and, and asked me to be a columnist. Um, you know, it got syndicated in Time Magazine. It propelled me to being the number 10 columnist uh, on, on the entire uh, Medium platform, just below like Hillary Clinton and, and, and a couple other very influential people. Uh, and so how do I do it? I, here's, here's the trick. I, all I did was I, I created a custom audience of 200,000 uh, active medium users. Okay, so those are the people who, who are very, very active. And so I promoted the piece of content to those people. And those are the types of people who are likely to heart that content. Uh, and, and all you need to do is generate hearts because once you generate hearts, then you get floated up to the top of the list. And then that being on the top of the list generates even more, more hearts is kind of this like, jet stream that kind of pushes you forward and, and it's just incredible like within minutes uh, and so basically uh, the same algorithm is employed by all of these places like Reddit uh, like LinkedIn Pulse it's all about how much engagement can you drive to your stuff like in, in a short period of time and so social ads are really great for doing this like it's very easy to get on Reddit believe it or not uh, and, and, and my number three hack here has to do with uh, the gravitational slingshot around the moon um, this has to do with rank brain and SEO. Uh, basically, there's a new sheriff in town. I know your SEO stuff, it's traditionally been, been ranked based on links and keywords, but there's this new sheriff in town. It's like user engagement metrics, like uh, like click-through rates, dwell time, that kind of stuff. Like, are people clicking on it or bouncing away, et, et, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, what we, what we found was that the, the, the more, the higher the click-through rate of your organic listings, like in terms of versus the expected click-through rate for the given position that you're in, the more likely you are to get the top spots 
Um, this is my own research. Uh, similarly, we, we saw that the, the higher the bounce rate, the less likely you were to, to rank in prominent positions. And the fact that it's like kind of so broken like that that, 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 that means it's algorithmic in nature. Like there's actually some, some line of code that's saying like, if it's higher than this, then eh, like you're not eligible, that kind of thing. Uh, so, so basically, um, the, the key here for SEO going forward is, is just you really need good click-through rates on your, your organic listings, and you also need to have have those clicks stick. Like they can't bounce away; they need to stay uh, for a long time. Uh, and so. Why am I even bringing this, this up? And the, the answer is because uh, these social media ads, they actually cr uh, dramatically uh, cr increase click-through rates and conversion rates because they, they create a bias in people's heads. So it's basically, if you can kind of cast your these ads to the types of people who are, who are likely to search for your stuff uh, in the near future, then you'll dramatically increase both the click-through rates and the conversion rates, which will, which will increase the rankings. How crazy is that? So now we're orbiting Mars, uh, where it's my number two hack. It has to do with super remote marketing. Uh, basically, I just want to combine everything we talked about So with remarketing. So we're going to remarket to the people who, who who consume our content, but not, but not every one of those people are going to be interested. So we overlay those demographic filters, those behavioral filters, and you know, and, and using high engagement content. If you wrap this all together in one one package, uh, this is really really uh, remarkable because you're going after the people who are interested in your stuff, who's checked your checked you out recently, and can afford to buy your stuff. Guys, my last hack here has to do with RLSA, kind of getting the slingshot home. RLSA, it's remarketing for 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 search ads. Uh, so basically in AdWords. So in AdWords, uh, you can use RLSA to target keywords, people who search on keywords uh, that you're interested in who also visited your site recently. So two things have to happen. Uh, and basically um, what's again so interesting about this is that it dramatically increases the click-through rates, cuts the cost per click because higher click-through rate is lower cost per click and, and also increases the conversion rates. Uh, and the problem with RLSA is that it's you're only going after the small dark circle, the people who know about you and, and your brand, right? You're, you're going to have low low click volume. So the solution is to use the power of, of social ads, as I've described to you for these content promotion hacks, to d dramatically increase the size of the cookie pools that you have to to remarket to uh, in in search, uh, guys. Congratulations, we made it back to Earth. Let's just wrap this up here. Uh, what does it all mean? Well. Guys, what's the point of marketing and advertising? Uh, I think what it the point of doing, why are we doing all these stupid blogs and stuff like this? The point is we're trying to get this in, inspirational, memorable, uh, you know, messages like content uh, about your company and what it is you do and your brand essence uh, to your target market. Those people will see that ad or that content. They might not take action right away, but they'll form a bias in their head later when the need arises. They'll either do a branded search for your stuff, in which case you've won uh, because they're doing branded searches for you, or they'll do an unbranded search for the products and services that you're selling. They'll see your listing and they'll say, "Oh, I've heard of that." that company and they'll, they'll be much more likely to click and buy from you. Guys, here's the data. Data doesn't lie. Brand affinity dramatically impacts the click-through rates. So like we're looking at different different uh, uh, different companies in, in different industries and, and comparing new and versus repeat visitors, click-through rates much, much higher when there's brand affinity. And so that's what the content is doing. It's creating the brand affinity. Uh, the same thing with, with the conversion rates, the people who are familiar with your brand, much, much more likely to actually buy the stuff that you're selling. So here's a summary. You're going to have to get this uh, from the, the screen grabs or, or from the download or whatever. Uh, just, you know, only send unicorns into space, never send donkeys into space. Uh, they never make it. Uh, uh, the, that's, that's you know, the, the, the key here. Uh, and, and, and we talked about using all these different slingshots and, and Mars intercept and grab gravitational assists uh, to, to kind of do the heavy lifting to get us from Earth to, Mar to Mars. So guys, find your unicorns uh, and and uh, be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys. Thank you, SEM Rush uh, organizers for putting this on and for allowing me to to participate and, and uh, ho hope to, to, to see you guys again soon. Thanks. All right, thank you, Larry. That was fantastic. Really inspiring, some great ideas. I think a lot of great takeaways for everybody.